Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you feel like identifying with. It is Thursday. I did check the fire. Thank you, you stinking bot. <laughs> uh, 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 let's see. I have a brand new, currently in alpha game to stream today, thanks to Terminals uh, by Evolve PR. Uh, they, uh, <clears throat> they're. They're a, a PR organization uh, helping um, uh, game devs, uh, especially a lot of indie devs, uh, get their um, their product out there to uh, streamers and YouTubers and other content creators. And and um, I uh, signed up for it for a while ago. And, and I've I've done a couple of games uh, that they've uh, um, granted me access to uh, so far. And this is another one. Uh, and. Uh, there is, uh, I've watched uh, a video or two, uh, the trailer for the game, uh, and um, that is really about it. Uh, I know very little about it. Uh, I am going to do a blind uh, playthrough of it today. I'm going to start with the tutorials uh, because uh, I don't, like I said, don't know anything about it. Um, the, the one thing that I gleaned from the uh, from the trailer is that it first the very first thing is it reminded me an awful awful lot of Space Rangers uh, and um, a bit of Master of Orion 2 kind of Starcrafty it, it, yeah so it's it's kind of a a, a, a mashup of a couple of different things that I've played uh, and uh, it, it seemed pretty neat, so I put in a request for it and got one. Hi, Shaw. Yes, it is a brand new game. It is still in alpha. It is called Star Sector. Uh, and as far as a release date, the, uh, the the lead dev on it said when it is ready. So, whenever. So we might run into some bugs, might run into some problems, some features, as it were. <laughs> um, the uh, but yeah, it, it looks uh, it looks pretty solid um, from uh, from what I've seen uh, as far as you know like uh, uh, the the build um, build notes on it and stuff like that. Yes, we will see how it plays. Hopefully, it'll be uh, hopefully it'll be a good experience. Uh, and uh, if not, well, then we'll give feedback to the devs and uh, and. And see what's up but uh, yeah so here we go I'm gonna jump into the tutorial here uh, and then see what's uh, see what's up here these are how many how you can get extra info from many tooltips by pressing F1 to expand them okay I'm gonna look through a couple of these actually uh, before I jump into the tutorial just to you know get an idea ships with a D designation are substandard versions of the normal halls okay LMB to fire, RMB to use shields, WAS and D to pilot the ship. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Editing a text field, you press shift backspace to clear it. Control backspace will delete the last word. That's handy. Launching torpedoes at point blank range can be hazardous to your ship. All right, well, that, that's good. We won't launch torpedoes when they're right up close. Hold shift while adding or removing flux vents or capacitors to do it more quickly. Okay, I don't know what those are. Tab to toggle the command UI, command UI to give orders to your fleet. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into a tutorial here. Combat basic. Welcome to Star Sector Combat Tutorial. This part will go over combat basics. Let's get started. Next right. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Arrows. <clears throat> Flagship for this tutorial is a hammerhead class destroyer. First things first, let's learn how to get it moving. That's a good idea. You can pause and unpause the game at any time by pressing space. I like that. See, I am I know that there are very hard left and hard right camps on the whole real-time strategy thing. There are people who 
see real-time strategy as the only way to play a game like this, and there are people who see turn-based as the way to play stuff like this. Um, so you've got things like StarCraft, real-time strategy, um, or uh, I recently played... Um, there are so many Space Hulk games, it's hard to keep track of which ones. Uh, tactics, Space Hulk Tactics. That one is a turn-based strategy, and I know that there are people, you know, it, it's it's rare to find somebody who likes both. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Uh, I like uh, real-time strategy games. They're pretty cool. I like turn-based better because I like to sit and think about things before I do them, uh, and I find my gaming experience to, uh, you know, the experience that I like to have while gaming to be more on the side of <clears throat> relaxing, uh, that is what is enjoyable for me, and real-time strategy is often pretty anxiety-inducing. Some people like that, some people don't. So, I like the fact that you can pause it at any time. That's nice. Uh, let's see, right arrow, press W, uh, let's see, A, D to turn, W and S to accelerate forward and back. Hold C to bring your ship to a halt. Give this a try and press continue when you've got the hang of it. Okay, so let's go thrusters here. It's going to take a bit to get used to the camera moving whenever I move the mouse rather than having it on an edge. Okay, I'm looking for a speed indicator. There we go. Okay, I see it down here in the bottom left. It would be, I'd like to see uh, this change to a different color or something when you're in reverse because I can see the speed reducing and then increasing to 90, but right now I'm moving backwards. And I, you can see the, the trails off of the engines, but once you're not thrusting forward, it does not have that. So you'll have to pay attention to the movement of the stars. It's pretty interesting. Okay. Uh, so I think I've got the hang of it. Let's uh, hold C and bring the ship to a stop. And hit the arrow to do this. Moving the mouse around pans your view. You can also move the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Nice. Oh, and the, the turrets on the ship, I don't know if you can see them there, these turrets right here are following the mouse in their firing arc. Interesting, okay, nice. Okay, ships can strafe sideways. This is particularly useful if you wanna move while keeping your front-facing weapons pointed at your target. Okay, but how? Ship will turn towards your mouse pointer while you strafe, so keep the cursor on top of the target. But it didn't say how to strafe. Weapons and maneuvering are disabled. Try strafing. Hold down shift and A or D. Okay. All right, so let's back up. Take a bit to get used to. Oh, okay, I see strafe. When you strafe, it'll follow. Gotcha, okay.
interesting. That is a very different control scheme than what I'm really used to. That's going to be interesting. When I feel comfortable with it. Okay, so I might be at this for an hour. Let's try it. I'm gonna drink some more coffee. Yay, now on to weapons. I like weapons. Hammerhead's weapons are organized in three groups. Press one, two, and three to switch between groups and left click to fire the selected group. Give this a try. We'll continue when you're ready. Okay, so ah, I see. There's little arrows here. Two assault chain gun damage high explosive. Sabited SRMs, kinetic damage, and PD lasers, energy damage. Okay. Let me go into the settings and turn the sound up a bit here because I can't even hear the gunfire on these things. Let me see what uh, what these do. Hopefully that's not too loud. Tell me if it's too loud. Try. All right, sounds good. Guided missiles require a target. By default, they'll lock on to the enemy nearest your cursor when you fire. That's pretty cool. You can also lock on to specific enemy to ensure missiles go after it and to see more information about it. Art style is similar to FTL. Yeah. And see, I don't know if you ever played uh, Space Rangers, but it's an awful lot like that, too. Uh, Space Rangers? Is it Space Rangers? Let me check something out real quick here. I think that's the name of it. I've played through it like a dozen times. It's a lot of freaking fun. Yeah. Uh, Space Rangers. Yes, that's the one. Um, I played through the first one. Played through the second one. Uh, I like the second one a lot more, but the first one is still really good. Uh, there are a lot of things um, about the second one that improved greatly on the first one, but did not... Um, no, 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 no. There. Have a Jaws. He's trying to turn off my uh, my router right now. But isn't he adorable? Look at that little guy. He's so cute. Here you are. And see, he's he's got a belly spot. <laughs> Meow. What's your motto? Ah, don't bite my nose. Don't bite my nose. Oh. That's why we call him Jaws. <laughs> He's always been very bitey, even though uh, when he started doing this, he didn't even have teeth. <laughs> uh, let's see. You can lock on to specific enemy to ensure they go after it. Okay. Uh, you can also lock on. Uh, oh, but I did that. 
Oh, okay, there we go. Hover over the enemy and press R to target it. Ah, okay. So they have, ooh, they get a lot of weapons. A salamander, a harpoon, an arbalist, and a flat cannon. Yikes. It's an enforcer class close support variant. Now on to defenses. Most ships use shields to defend against incoming damage. Hammerhead has front-facing shields, but, ha but some ships have omnidirectional that can rotate to face threats from any direction. Nice. Right-click to turn on my shields. Ah, okay. Expand, how's it going? I am very new to the game. <laughs> this should be fun. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you don't give me a lot of confidence. How's it going? Welcome. Yes, I am very, very new to the game. This is a completely blind playthrough. Uh, I was uh, granted early access from Terminals uh, earlier this week, and um, so I'm, I'm giving it a try. It looks fun. Uh, I, I played an awful lot of Masters of Orion 2. I played an awful lot of... Um, uh, Space Rangers, which kind of has a very it, kind of similar from what it looks like. The only thing that I've really watched uh, is the um, uh, the 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 trailer video um, from the devs on it. And other than that, I've done no real research. <laughs> Firing most weapons except for missiles generates flux. Your ship has limited limited flux capacity. Managing what you use. It, uh, use it on is key to survival. You can see your current flux level on the info display lower left. Okay, I noticed that. New trailer for 0.9. Most of the stuff you've seen is pretty old. Um, that trailer might be for 0.9. It's a lot more fleshed out campaign stuff. Cool. That's very good. Um, I believe... I believe the trailer is relatively new. I was looking on his uh, Twitter... Uh, feed uh, about it this morning and it I, I want to say it is um, that there there's a trailer for um, the most recent update and I know you have this but just in case anybody else wants to look uh, I'll put the, uh, the page up there okay firing weapons let's see all right so there we go got to watch the flux capacity Fire your assault cannons, chain one for a bit, and watch how they build up flux, and then continue when you're ready. Oh, okay. And I'm sure different weapons drive that up and up and up and up more. Like, I would imagine that the lasers build it. Oh, the lasers don't build it at all. Okay. Or, well, tiny little bit. Okay. Uh, so we'll go back to one, continue when you're ready, I will. Flux from firing these dissipates almost as quickly as it's generated different ships and ship loadouts. Dissipate flux at different rates, okay. Support varying amounts of weapons effectively, cool. Shields generate flux continuously while they're up. Ah, that's why the number was... Gotcha. And even more every time they absorb damage. That makes sense. Even if you're not taking any damage on shields, keeping them off will let you put out more firepower. All right, good to know. See how the shields hold up under fire. Oh, I don't want to. Enemy ship has stopped firing, but your flux level isn't going down. Oh. Flux gain when the shields absorb damage is called hard flux. Only dissipates while the shields are off. Oh, oh, that's kind of ugly. <laughs> flux gain from firing weapons is called soft. Flux can dissipate while the shields are up. Okay. Notch on your flux bar indicates your hard flux level. Okay, I see the little notch. Right click to turn your shields off and let it dissipate. Gotcha. Okay. Good, now let's see what happens if you keep your shields on under fire for too long. Right click to turn your shields again and let the enemy keep firing at you. Kind of neat, last time you saw the tutorial was a lot less involved. Oh, no kidding. Oh, that's good. I'm glad I'm getting to show something new to you. That's excellent. 
It's not good. When Flux maxes out from shields, your ship overloads. Oh no! I don't like overloads. When the ship is overloaded, it can't fire a rail. Shields dissipate flux very slowly, but can still maneuver normally. Alright. Wait for the overload for the OV load to end. <laughs> I've been waiting for the OV load to end for a long time. Sorry, Penguins fan, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm. Now the ship is no longer overloaded, flux dissipating at a normal rate. Okay. You can also vent flux to dissipate it at double the normal rate. While venting, your ship can't fire or use shields, so you generally only want to use it when it's safe. Okay, press V to vent flux. Ooh, that's pretty. Sweet. Okay, good. As you can see, now you've been flanked by a pair of Lasher-class frigates. Oh, goody. <laughs> They're going to start launching missiles at you. Fortunately, these missiles aren't very effective at well-armored ships. Sit tight and let them get a few volleys off. That doesn't seem smart. <laughs> Be nice to shoot these down. Got some point defense lasers for that, but it's almost impossible to manually target all the incoming missiles. Fortunately, you can set any weapon group on auto fire, making the weapons identify and attack targets on their own. That's cool. Control 3 to enable auto fire for the point defense lasers. Ah, that's I figured that's what the PD in the PD laser meant. Make sure you have a different group selected. Selecting an auto firing group will result in a manual override of its controls. Okay, so while I have any other weapon group like the um, chain guns uh, selected, I can hit control and then the weapon group to light up the oh okay and it comes up lights up the auto fire nice now the laser switch to attacking the missiles as soon as they're launched point defense will automatically cool all right let's sweet your weapons will not target missile regular weapons will not target missiles on Okay, that makes sense. Each ship also has a special system and active ability it can perform. For the hammerhead, it's an accelerated ammo feeder that greatly increases the rate of fire for ballistic weapons. Oh, cool. Some ship systems have limited uses, some generate flux, some have a cooldown, and some use a combination of those. <laughs> the accelerated ammo feeder must cool down before it can be used again. That makes sense. Press F to activate the accelerated ammo feeder and fire the assault chain guns to see its effect. Okay, so we got those selected. And now. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, that uh, greatly increases their fire rate. Completed the basic combat tutorial. Dun dun dun. All right. Firing weapons are using shields built up. Okay. Cool. Shift while scrolling with a mouse wheel to move more quickly. Okay. Bombers have high damage potential, but work best when combined with other fighters, weapons, and ships to ensure they can deliver damage. Nice. Okay. That's, that seems pretty straightforward as far as normal combat strategery. Welcome to the advanced combat tutorial. Alright, your flagship is still the same hammerhead, but the point defense lasers have been swapped out for ion cannons. Ooh. Don't you wipe out my router, you little monster. Yay, kittens. Come here. Come here, Jaws. Oh, here's another Jaws. <laughs> they like to climb all over my computer, all over the router. They just love that corner because, you know, they're kittens. Uh, already going over the basics. Using weapons, previous tutorial. Now let's take a look at picking the right weapon for the job. Each weapon deals damage a particular type. Kinetic deals 200% to shields, but only 50% to armor. That seems backwards. 
Since the enemy ship has its shields up, let's start off by firing some Sabbat missiles at it. They are extremely effective at bringing down shields. Okay, so we'll select the Sabbated fire enough Sabbats with the enemy to overload its shields. All right. Shields are down and an overload in progress. The ship is vulnerable. The next step is to bring down its armor. High explosive damage deals 200 for armor. Okay, that makes sense. I see. Only 50% to shields. Switch to your assault chain guns. Punch through the armor. Focus your fire on one spot. Excellent. The enemy ship is taking hull damage. Now let's finish it off. The accelerated ammo feeder to deal damage faster. If your flux maxes out for fire, you just wait a bit so I can dissipate it. Okay. Careful, when a ship is disabled, the explosion deals damage to all nearby ships except for fighters. Oh. Okay. So don't get close to them when they pop. Make sure you're far enough away to avoid damage. About a ship's length should be enough. Okay, so it doesn't, it's not gonna, like, nuke an entire sector. <laughs> armor works in this if you manage to punch through it hitting that spot in the hull deals a ton more damage. oh nice that is pretty cool there are two damage types we haven't looked at yet fragmentation deals 25% to armor and shields but usually costs little flux and has a high base DPS value making it effective versus exposed hull or lightly armored unshielded targets like missiles and fighters all right First, let me get back over so I'm not moving. Enemy damage, energy damage deals 100% to everything. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that's interesting. Some weapons deal EMP damage in addition to their. Ooh. I like electromagnetic pulses. Does not affect shields, armor, or hull, but it can disable enemy weapons and engines. Cool. stop here. Ion cannons deal lots of EMP damage and little else. Switch the ion cannons and disable some of the weapons on the enforcer. Okay, I will comply. Aha! Aha! Excellent, now maneuver behind the enemy ship to disable its engines. You need to take out more than half to cause a total flame. Okay. The movement controls are going to take me a bit to get used to. sitting duck. It won't be able to maneuver at all until the engines are back online. Non-EMP weapons can disable engines and weapons, but EMP bypass armor to get the job done faster. Sweet. Take another look at shields. Turn your shields and sit tight for a moment. You'll be attacked with being weapons. Yeah. The art style in this is fantastic. I just, I've got to say. It, it's like old school gaming with high definition it's you know with a uh, with better with less pixelation and you know the ships aren't just squares with a couple of blue dots on them it's not building up flux despite the shields being under fire okay this is because beam weapons center generate soft flux when hitting shields okay good to know Wait until you see the bigger ships, the more frantic battles. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, as I had the uh, the 
just the the main menu <clears throat> screen up there while I was getting set up for uh, for stream. I saw a couple of things fly, uh, you know, get into a fight and a big, I mean, a ship that was probably twice the size of this one. A good shader mod for that stuff too, if your PC can handle it. Oh, cool. Yeah, it should be able to. Uh, I've got a, uh, a 1050 Ti um, four gig card uh, and I'm running 16 uh, gig of RAM and the processor's not half bad. It's a, a pretty decent thing. I built it um, new uh, a year ago, but it wasn't top of the line parts. It was right before the, it was right as the 1060 came out, I think. 1080. Maybe. I don't know, it's hard to keep track of all of them because every it seems like every other day they've got a new video card coming out, so. All right, let's see. Uh, this may make them seem weak, but remember that this flux still needs to be dissipated, leaving that much, leaving that much less flux and dissipation to power weapons. Beam weapons are also very efficient and need little flux to fire. Okay, that that makes sense. Ships receive an engine boost, a bonus to top speed maneuverability when their flux level and flux generation are at zero. Oh, okay. Turning shields on, even without taking any damage, is enough to cancel the bonus. Gotcha. Travel through the nebula in front of your ship, noting how your ship moves faster when the shields are down. All right. Oop, wrong button. firing at me. Okay, yeah, I see how that uh, how that is. That's wild. That part of the ship is all heated up for the beam weapons. Engine boost is particularly important for larger ships, which have a much lower top speed without it. That makes sense. Maintain the engine boost for a ship with auto-firing weapons. You can press X to hold the fire. Carriers will also need Z to pull back their fighters. Oh, okay. So you'll hold X to kill auto-fire. All right, that makes sense. Congratulations, complete advanced tutorial. Probably a good idea to complete the fleet command tutorial next. Yes, I think I will. <laughs> yes. All right, let's see. How does this work? Ah! Oh my goodness. Welcome to the Star Sector fleet command tutorial. Let's get started. Let's. At the start of a battle, you have to decide what ships to deploy. Recovering after a deployment costs supplies, so you usually don't want to just deploy everything. All right, that makes sense. If you only have one ship, it's deployed automatically. Okay, to just deploy ships, press the reinforcement button in the upper right. All right, since this is a tutorial and supply costs aren't an issue, let's deploy everything. Wait, you just told me I didn't want to do that. Oh, and then you can click all to do that. Cool. Yeah, I was seeing that uh, the uh, the modding um, that uh, the the devs are supporting uh, modifications to the game. Uh, so that that is pretty awesome. Uh, I also saw him ask a question about Mod DB, uh, which is a site I've used before for uh, uh, Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, and uh, Call of Pripyat. And um, 
yeah, I'm, so I'm familiar with that uh, with that location for game modding. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's create some assignments for your ships to carry out. Let's do that. First thing we want to do is capture some objectives, locations especially suited for deployment of nav buoy sensor arrays or comm relays. Okay. Mods have been a big part of the game for years. There's a lot of great ones. How long has this been in development? Because I, you know, there are so many indie developers. There are so many different games coming out. And I just, I can't keep track of them all. I really can't. And, you know, like, uh, not sure you got it in 2012. Holy smokes. So, yeah, they've, they've been at this for a while then. I'm, I'm assuming that it's a pretty small crew doing it, too. The very, which was when the very first campaign update released. Oh, wow. No kidding. Damn. So more than likely, these these guys have day these guys and girls or whatever combination uh, have um, have day jobs. I would imagine. <laughs> but uh, that's a story for a lot of indie devs, and you know, I I like to support the little guy. Uh, I'm a, a big fan of of uh, frequenting uh, small mom and pop businesses in the real world um, because you know. It's awesome to do. And uh, the same thing goes for, for indie devs. I mean, you know, companies like uh, EA and Bethesda, they, they have a lot of money. They get a lot of customers. But these little guys don't. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't put out a good quality game. I've played quite a few indie titles that I really enjoyed. So that's a good, uh, good thing to do. See the bonuses. These provide are modest, but they add up. Wait, what did I miss? First thing. All right, all right, all right. I see. Bonuses these provide are modest, but they add up, especially given the, if you don't hold them, the enemy will. Left click on a nav buoy. Okay. Select capture from a list of available. Yeah, words are hard. List of available assignments. You can also use the keyboard shortcut displayed on the button. Ah, so C for capture, A for assault, Y for rally task force, L for rally civilian craft. Okay, let's go with capture. Nearby frigate is automatically assigned to the task. That's what the arrow on the map indicates. Gotcha, okay. To pan the view around, right click and drag the mouse to the, edge of, uh, to the edge of the screen. You can also toggle the command UI on and off by pressing tab, but don't do this. Alright, fine. Goodness. Creating an assignment costs a command point, but also opens the command channel. While it's open, giving orders is free, but creating new assignments still costs points. Okay. Command points used to require uh, are requ required to create assignments and give direct orders to your fleet. Once an order is given, all other orders are free for a few seconds. While the command frequency remains open, canceling assignments does not cost command points. Canceling all assignments will allow your fleet to engage the enemy at will. Uh, ordering a full assault will cancel any oh, will cancel all assignments and also make your ships engage very aggressively. Canceling a full assault requires a command point. Oh, okay, and you get them over time. Gotcha. You did not actually know about the channel? Oh. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Okay, you can also manually assign a ship to perform a task. Select one of the other frigates. Right click on the calming ray. Oh, okay, cool. Assignment appropriate to your selection and what you right clicked on was created, in this case, another capture. You can also assign specific ships to existing assignments by selecting them and right clicking on the assignment. Ah, okay. Light escort, medium escort, heavy escort. Order up to four frigates, two destroyers, or cruiser. 
This will take a bit to get used to. Let's cancel assignment. Okay. Uh, now that the orders are locked in, let's unpause and wait for your ships to secure the objectives. You can also keep an eye on what show video feed. Don't think you've ever used the escort options? Hmm. Generally pretty hands-off for the fleet management. Okay, that's good. You can keep an eye on all right. Oops. You can exit the feed at any time to press escape. Okay. F to cycle the feed through the rest of the ships. Press tab to reopen the command UI if necessary. Don't forget to unpause. Okay. Ah, it's it is. No, it isn't. It's paused. Okay. Ah, okay. I see. It's great for the one that's open. Press tab reopen. All right, did that. Tutorial resume once both objectives are captured. Okay. It looks like both of them are captured because they're surrounded in green. ships in sight. Let's give a couple of orders to make the battle go smoothly for your side. Enemy cruiser is tough but relatively harmless. Okay. We'd like our ships to focus on the more dangerous enemy first and that's going to be this one here because that's the destroyer. Okay. Select the cruiser. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, and select avoid from the list of available assignments. Ah. Cool. Good. Now let's order your ships to focus on the enemy destroyer. Only target left, so they will naturally do that anyway, but giving an eliminate order will also make them more aggressive. Oh, okay. Grass. Oh, nice. With the destroyer, select eliminate. Okay. Good. Some of the ships in your fleet will now engage the enemy destroyer, and the rest will try to hold the objectives with all avoiding the enemy cruiser. You might have noticed that you're not directly controlling a ship at the moment. This can happen if you don't deploy your flagship or if your flagship is destroyed. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right, cool. Transfer command to the hammerhead so you can pilot it yourself and play out the rest of the battle. Cool. Select the hammerhead. Press transfer command. Then wait for the shuttle pod to take you to the new flagship. Huh. All right. Probably be doing this a few times. <laughs> Good to know. Completed the fleet command tutorial. Feel free to experiment with the other assignments. And they offer and see if you can win this battle. Press escape to leave the tutorial. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Control 4 will put those on. Oh, they're not on. They were on auto fire already. Ouch.
that hurts. That's a brutal loadout for the tutorial. In a good way or a bad way? I think I ought to stop missing. Shields might help, but yeah, I'm high on flux right now. That is true. Uh-oh. They got one of the sensors. <laughs> Fragged. <laughs> I got the front end of their ship glowing a little bit, but uh, whoops. <laughs> Kaboom. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, is there a way to restart or should I, let's see, go to end mission. Surrender and go back to the main menu. Okay, I have a very poor hang of this. That works? Okay. We'll run through this again just to click the reinforcements button, deploy all. Create some assignments. Afraid to back off and vent, you'll get a lot more out of your weapons when you're not hitting that flux wall. Good point, yes. And that's V to vent, but I don't want to do that when I'm being fired at. Yeah. Okay, good call. It's a lot to take in. <laughs> Let's see, relatively harmless. Alright. Select the cruiser. We can avoid him. Alright. Controlling. Imagine it took you a few tries to get the game back on. Yeah, it's uh, it it's not like a normal, you know, like a lot of games in in this genre, so to speak, have like very similar chains of events and and you know like control schemes and things like that and this is a, a very different experience from what I'm used to so it, it's I'm I'm digging it so far
lure those fighters out and try and damage them. Get an order to play the games. They seem to be a bit scared. Yeah. Ah, I'm getting fragged again. Okay. So let's see. I go to this. Um. How do I do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're on a void. Kind of nasty. Surprising tutorial doesn't mention that. Right. Yeah, indeed. There we go. Now we seem to have a better chance. <laughs> Smoked. Beep beep. Frigate, that'll probably work. Oh, let's see. Neat. Flagship is in danger of suffering malfunctions due to low combat readiness. Uh-oh. 
ship system I think is pretty useful what we've been messing with. Ship system on this. Um, that I'm not sure I know. I don't remember what the... How to do that. F. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that. Yes, that. That is pretty cool. Oh boy, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Ramming speed. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> well, we'll take over another one. See if we can get that destroyed. <laughs> <clears throat> Shift movement for faster shifts allows you to quickly get behind. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been using shift, but I think I think I've got a malfunction on this one. Yeah, because it's getting posed. <laughs> I gotta not get that close to it. It wasn't uh, it wasn't moving very effectively. But this ship is almost dead, so if I keep throwing mine at it, maybe I'll win. <laughs> Wrong button. Yep. Combat readiness is a pain. Yeah. I'm seeing this. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, indeed. And it sucks because its hull is very, very low. My engine's back, that's good. And it's not fast enough to catch up to them, it looks like. Well, hopefully it won't be throwing me against stuff like this, like right at the beginning. Too close. Too close. <laughs> General picked your fights in the campaign. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Now that I'm bad at this. <laughs> kind of brutal. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm I'm glad that it's not just it's not just that I suck. Um <laughs> I mean, yes, that has an awful lot to do with it. But um but yes. Uh give me uh just a minute here. I'm going to run and refill my uh my coffee and I will be back in a moment. And we'll start up uh, this campaign thing and see what happens.
All right, I have returned with a fresh cup of... And let's see what we've got here. Carriers will stop launching replacement fighters once their combat readiness reaches zero. So I'm assuming that the longer your ships are deployed, yeah, see that thing is a huge giant. Um, the longer your ships are deployed, the their combat readiness drops is what I'm assuming is the case here. Uh, Okay. Missions. It degrades and events in the overworld can affect it too. Oh. Good to know. So there are a lot. Holy smokes, that's a lot of stuff. Bigger ships suffer a lot less. That makes sense. The higher, the larger the ship, you would assume that there's more crew and uh, versus a small ship that would get stressed out a lot quicker. That makes sense. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to look at what the names are of these. Uh, Predator of Prey, Sinking Bismar, nothing personal. Okay, Godforsaken Rock, the Esconia Fringe. We had a deal. A dusty No Good Bar and a Shard who I met the miner with the Metal Eye. Yikes. You ain't consult. That's got to be cold in the winter. Can you imagine that? Having a metal eye going out in the cold. <laughs> Eyelids sticking to it. <laughs> okay. He winked and couldn't unwink. Sold me 12 containers of low grade ferrous ore hiding 432 CP carbines with enough ammunition <clears throat> to fuel a small insurgency for an entire muggy bull turn summer season. Alright, well, that's probably a long time. Next step was rendezvous with Moon Hyrad Salazar. Moon flies a mule past Dictat patrols, but never seems to get out of owning someone, owing someone a lot of something. Reactor plating was always a bit thin, if you catch my meaning. Ah, uh huh. I'm <clears throat> paid to ship cargo, not ask questions, but I gotta ask why Moon's saying he's not gonna pay for this job. She's not gonna pay for this job that you might as well hand over the cargo now because no one needs to die for a shipment of hot guns. Now, I weren't the one to broach this question, this question of who's dying for what out here, but now that's on the table being asked and I've got to provide her a good answer. Ping my second with the go code and flip the safeties 50 clicks away. The scope shows the moon's engines bloom with gamma radiation as she maneuvers to an attack vector. Uh-oh. Now, let me... I want to see something here. Okay, so missions are specific things. And then I'm assuming that a new game is... Because I, I was reading that it's an open-world kind of sandboxy thing with, you know, RPG-type gameplay. And that was throwing me off. I'm like, huh, that doesn't seem like... These are just, like, combat missions. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's do this. Because it said uh, for a better experience to stick to campaign and tutorial. Mm. Oh, cool. Random seed used to generate the sector using the same seed result. The same sector being generated in a new game. So you can be copied from the character screen in an existing game. Oh, that's neat. Missions are good practice. That makes sense. That makes an awful lot of sense. Okay. Uh, pick a random.
There you go. Like that. <clears throat> Iron mode. I can imagine what that is. All right. Uh, young average. Oh, it's sector age. Oh, okay. So there's going to be more, more stars, more planets. It seems in the uh, old than in the young. Okay. Well, we'll go with mixed. Most recent occupation was a bounty hunter commanding a wolf class frigate. Wolf class is a sleek and deadly combat frigate with middling logistical stats, best used near civilization or with the support of other ships with better capacity for carrying fuel and supplies. Okay. Scavenger, commanding a Wayfarer class combat freighter. Wayfarer is an ungainly vessel with an excellent capacity for carrying cargo, fuel, and crew. Combat ability is limited, but not to be discounted. Designed to operate on the fringes of civilization, this freighter is quite capable of defending itself. All right. The Wolf Frigate is the one, oh, the one from the tutorial. Okay, okay, good, 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 good to know. As an explorer leading a salvage expedition from aboard an Apogee class cruiser, faster start. A group of ships capable of performing salvage operations on the fringes of the sector and defending itself against most of the threats found here. It includes a tanker for increased fuel capacity and exploration and sufficient cargo capacity to carry the salvage back to the core worlds. All right? Or a mercenary leading a small force from aboard a Hammerhead class destroyer, faster start. Small but Highly combat capable task force geared towards bounty hunting it includes small tanker to extend its operating range somewhat. Okay, I might go with the uh, the first one, uh, just the the wolf class, because I'm best used near civilization too. All right, a bounty hunter commanding wolf class. In addition, your fleet includes a kite class shuttle under the command of an experienced subordinate. Kite class is a light and nimble ship with limited armament, not capable of doing much damage itself, however capable of being persistent distraction, especially in the hands of an officer with the right set of defensive skills. Okay, well, the experienced subordinate sounds good. Shepherd class drone tender with a cargo of heavy machinery. Hmm. Shepherd's not a combat ship, being both slow and fragile. Although its drones are capable of providing decent support to another ship. Its true value, however, lies in a generous cargo hold and numerous salvaging and surveying oriented hull features. Its cargo of heavy machinery is also useful in running salvage and surveying operations. That might be the one to go with. Because I'm going to need money. Let's go with it. Let's go with the cargo. Well, let's go with easy. <laughs> Recommended for a first time player. We'll do that. Ships take 25% less damage. Sensor range is increased by 500 units. Salvage is increased by 50%. Salvaging is pretty great in this version. Good pick. Okay, good. Um, now, what is the. Here, let's see. Start with a tutorial mission that introduces high-level campaign mechanics. Okay, yeah, that's probably a good idea. All right. I'm going to die. <laughs> Control click to buy, sell a stack. Shift click picks up items one, one at a time. Hold shift and click to drag. Select a specific quantity, hold Alt, and drag to click on cell and transfer stacks on the mouse pointer. Press T to anchor your view. Oh, okay. That's weird. Uh oh. Alt cell by functionality isn't actually enabled by default. It's a config option. Oh, okay. I'll have to look for that holdover from an earlier version. Good to know. Okay, welcome to the sector. Your fleet is in the middle of nowhere. Hey, they're where I live. Nice. That's uh, 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 for the new here. Uh, I, I live in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I am in the mountains of New Mexico, and um, 
when I tell people, you know, people ask me where I live, I, I tell them, you drive out into the middle of nowhere, <clears throat> then you turn right, then you drive another 12 miles, and that's where I live. Now, here's the crazy thing. If I give you a specific place to leave from, those directions are accurate. <laughs> very, very accurate. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, okay, so uh, middle of nowhere, low on supplies. If you don't acquire more supplies, your free fleet will suffer through a slow but ultimately fatal decline. Yay! All right, decide to continue, I suppose. Uh, fortunately, there's a debris field nearby. Move up into it and activate your scavenge ability to search for useful cargo. It's possible to scavenge through the same debris field multiple times, but there are diminishing returns and increased risk with each attempt. Only scavenge once here. Okay. Gain the ability to scavenge. Make sure to take all of the supplies and any other valuable cargo, but feel free to leave the cheap and bulky metals behind to get your fleet moving. Click on an empty space in the direction you want to move. Okay. This is... that's a drone. Okay, so I'm assuming it just means finish, like, get it. Yeah, alright, there we go. Please assume a stable orbit relative to the debris field. Field appears stable and will not drift apart anytime soon. Long range scans indicate it's likely something of value could be found inside. There are indications of some easy pickings to be had, and the risk of an accident during accident during a salvage operation is low. Yikes. Okay. That sucks. <laughs> All right, scavenging effectiveness is 22%. Oh no. Density of debris field affects both the amount of resources and the number of rare items found. Begin salvage operations. Okay, so. Supplies. Take those, because that's salvage, okay. Uh, and I want to make sure that I can um, take all of this stuff before the metals because they said feel free to leave that behind. I can put that there. Um, if I can hold it, I'll take it because I'm a pack rat. And as long as I am able to carry something, I will. F5 to quickly save and advance a tutorial. Okay. Cool. Pirate fleet is approaching. Dun, dun, dun. First you'll spot it as a sensor contact, then as an un unidentified fleet, and then, when it gets very close, you'll see its true colors. Don't worry, pirate ship is a shoddy rust bucket, and if you do lose, you can press F9 to quick load. Okay, cool. Even so, combat can be expensive, especially if there's no bounty on the enemy you fight. Deploying ships into battle reduces their combat readiness, and recovering CR consumes reply, supplies. Battle damage can cost even more supplies to repair. Hey, Blast, how's it going, dude? Welcome. Fighting is often necessary to survive. Wait for the pirate fleet to approach and then defeat them. Okay, yeah, watch that happen. <laughs> Identified fleet, looking for your fleet. Having a bit of a cold, otherwise you're good. Oh, man, dude, that sucks. I am so sorry to hear that you're getting sick. I will drink a cup to you. I'm doing pretty good. Um, although, uh, last night I wanted to take this mug and throw it up against a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for uh, for Hap to come in here and like seriously poke me about my my hockey team uh, getting uh, their butts kicked by his hockey team last night. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, uh, okay. So, pirate ship maneuvers to prevent you from disengaging easily does appear does not appear 
be certain of your identity. Any hosti hostilities will have a reduced impact on your reputation. Okay. <clears throat> Decide to open a comm link. Because as long as they attack me first, hopefully it won't impact my reputation. Pirate ship maneuvers easily. Oh, oh duh. Okay. You just... You just a bruiser come to do the hegemony's dirty work. Get it over with. Cut the comm link. Okay. Decide to continue. Hardship maneuvers prevent you disengaging. Okay. So move in to engage, I suppose. Closing fleet moves in to join battle. Transfer command for this engagement. But continue. Hmm. Directly in control of the upcoming engagement. Yeah, let's do this. That's the drone. Okay, that's the drone. That's this one. We'll do that one. Okay. Select which ships to deploy at the beginning of each battle. Deploy reinforcements as the battle goes on. Deploying a ship reduces its combat readiness by a fixed amount. In addition, ships will begin to gradually lose combat readiness after the peak readiness time runs out. Covering combat readiness takes time and consumes valuable supplies. Okay. Um, this one is not a ship that defends itself well. <clears throat> so I'm wondering if I should just deploy this one. ship with a star is the flagship. That's always where you'll fly by default. Gotcha. Hit escape or tab to close this. Tab. There we go. Nice. Thank you. Oh. Ooh. something up I mean granted I'm like liquid metal right now but okay <clears throat> one crew and no Marines were lost during the last engagement bummer I lost a, a crew member your forces were able to gain a complete victory in the last engagement relationship with the pirates reduced by three currently negative negative 68 out of a hundred they're hostile Salvage crews are able to recover 371 credits from CPU cores still active in the wreckage. Yeah, let's do it. And if I can fit this stuff, I will take it. What is this? A thumper. Rotary cannon with generous engineering specifications which provide for great ease of operation and reliability. Weapons officers Cross professional navies of the sector. Meanwhile, curse the thumper for rewarding poor maintenance habits. Damn. The ballistic. Fragmentation weapon 25% versus shields and armor, 100% versus hull. Okay. Accuracy medium, turn rate fast, burst size 20. Taking it. Taking it all. I can fit it. I'm seeing the ca my cargo capacity is right there. Okay. Personnel capacity and fuel capacity. Okay. What is this? Burn level. 
Oh, okay. Speed of the slowest ship. Gotcha. I might be getting sick too. My nose has been itching like crazy all freaking morning. Uh, confirm and continue. Fleet supply consumption has just gone up. Recovering combat readiness used to deploy ships into battle cost supplies, as does repairing battle damage. To reduce supply use, repairs and CR recovery on ships can be suspended from the fleet screen. Yeah, but I want to. I, I think I'm going to let that happen because I want to repair and. Um, yeah. Normally you'll gain one character point with each level up, but you'll get an additional three points at the start of your campaign. Oh, cool. You can spend character points to increase aptitudes and skills. Each aptitude governs a set of skills, and the maximum level of a skill is limited by the level of governing aptitude. This is a lot deeper than I expected it to be. That is, I'm, I'm digging this. This is really neat. The maximum you can reach is 50. Once character points are spent, they cannot be refunded. Uh, okay. Press C to open the character tab. Consider your options. You don't have to actually spend the points now if you don't want to. Okay. Woo. What is this? Okay, so these are the aptitudes, and then these are the... Ah, okay, so you have to increase the aptitude to unlock all of these. Gotcha. So combat, leadership, technology, and industry. Where these mean govern skills that directly improve combat effectiveness of piloted ship. Maximum level of all skills governed by this aptitude is limited to the level of A. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Uh, leadership governs the skills that improve the combat effectiveness of the fleet as a whole, and skills that improve the effectiveness of fighters. Cool. Technology governs skills that primarily improve the performance of the fleet in both combat and non-combat areas. That might be a good place to start with, because it kind of, you know, it's probably not as... Um, effective to combat um, as the, uh, the the combat aptitude is, but it probably blends them out over the two. Industry governs a range of skills to do with salvaging and exploration. Nice. Industry is the big point nine feature. A lot of that stuff is brand new. Oh, really? Hmm. Mostly colony stuff, salvaging was in before that from what you remember. Okay. And I was reading uh, the, uh, the the update notes for it, and it said something about being able to build a colony and, and earn uh, money that way. Um, you know, obviously it didn't go into a lot of detail. It was just update notes. Hmm. I think I'm still going to go with the technology because that seems to be like the general... like a more general aptitude. I tend to I tend to go for games like this. I tend to go in a direction of jack of all trades, master at none. Um, <laughs> so, we'll see how this goes. Maximum level of all skills is governed. Oh yeah. Okay. So there we go. Okay, so I can learn one of these. Oh yeah, I can, okay. So let me do that, actually. We'll go in everything but leadership. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, over time augmented reality presented. Becomes more and more difficult to distinguish from normal sensory input. Dedicated gunners often feel more kinship with their ship than they do with crewmates. Recoil. Plus 10% flux capacity. Every 
redeployed ship grants plus one to four percent depending on size to ECM rating. Hmm. Twenty percent maximum plus flux capacitors in all ships in the fleet. That seems like a better option than this one. Neutrino detector. Detect in-system entities at a very long range. Unreliable of false readings. Okay. Experience navigator. Terrain movement penalty from all applicable terrain. I think I'm going to go with this one. should have read the rest of them before I did that. Capacitors, vents, and the things you should add to ships yourself. They draw from the same point pool as weapons, hull mods. Oh, okay. Well, since I can reset it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Because <laughs> I didn't read the rest of this stuff anyway. It's useful. I probably won't use a ton of them. Okay. That's good to know. Losing less crew. That's not a bad idea. Recover weapons and fighter LPCs from enemy ships. I like that idea. Covered ships start with 20 to 40 percent hull integrity. Ooh. Resources and rare items recovered from abandoned, abandoned stations and other derelicts. Remove survey. Do a remote survey. Do a preliminary survey on all nearby planets. Hmm, that's interesting. Manage up to three administrators. That's got to be a colony thing. Yep. All industries require one less unit of all the commodities. Hmm, okay. Well, I don't have... Three command points. Ooh. Six officers, like ships and ships with an officer in command, nearly guaranteed to recover, be recoverable if lost. Oh no, kidding! Hmm. I'm not sure what to take. I'm just looking through these to see if there's something that I should go with in this line rather than the other one there. Ooh, I like that. Plus 50% maneuverability. I like that an awful lot. Hmm. 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 That's a lot of options and I don't know what to take. <laughs> Check the fire. Oop, that is not fire. I should probably fix that. I might go with that one right there. Technology is never bad. That's true. And I've got, uh, I've got points in it. Oh, I have four. Oh, 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 I see, I see. Okay, so I could do this and then have three of these left to do in here. Gotcha, okay, I'm understanding the point system now. Where was that one that I saw? Dang it. this one yeah I might put like put a point into this and take this uh, take this one here
because I'm probably going to need some kind of uh, boon to recovery. <laughs> Also, think that maybe the neutrino detector might not be a bad, bad idea. Level level two on the LPC one, you can get crazy lucky with that stuff. Though there are serious supply costs to recovering those. That makes sense. Recover disabled ships after a battle. Oh goodness. So like since I have two points, I could put this point into here and take this and have oh no 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 no. I see. I see. Okay. Because I need more character points for that. So it would require that. Okay, I'm i I'm starting to understand this. I'm just gonna I'm not gonna mute or anything. I'm just gonna pop over to my firebox over here and fix this up because otherwise it will get cold. curious about this thing and die. <sighs> That's ferret. <laughs> haven't tried that this early on might work out well yeah let's give it a shot let's see what happens might as well might as well okay let's start let's try it excuse me okay dun, 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 dun. so we got that confirm oh it's confirmed okay Escape at the top right close the stuff. Okay, gotcha. That works. Shortly after dispatching the pirates, you receive a tight beam communication with the system's main inhabited world. The message is brief and asks to travel there and contact Station Commander Centauran as soon as possible. Alright. It's laying a course for Korea. Something like that. Don't need to do this to do this to travel, but it helps keep track of where you're going and how long it'll take to get there. After dismissing this dialogue, press E to open the Intel screen to view the details. Select the message and click show on map button to open the map center directly on Akira. Then left click and hold on the planet and select lay in course. The menu that pops up. Alternatively, you can just right click on it. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, you can also press tab to open the map and locate manually. Once you get to Ankara, open the com directory and contact station commander. Okay. So, <clears throat> right here, show on map. Ah. Cool. Or I can just right click on it and it'll go. Cool. Okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. Well, it looks 
dangerous. That's the debris field. And of course. <coughs> And see, this is the part that feels an awful lot like um, Space Rangers. Let's see, pretty far away, it'll take a while to get there. You decide to continue. The sustained burn ability is useful for long distance travel. Activating it will briefly stop the fleet and reduce its acceleration to a minimum, but the maximum burn level would, uh, will be much higher, okay? Sustained burn can be Interrupted by other fleets activating an interdiction pulse. All right. Sustained burn to get to Incura more quickly. You can also press and hold shift to speed up time. Cool. Okay, and here's the distance to the target. Fleet is getting closer, which is controlled by the Hegemony, a major militaristic faction of the sector. While in Hegemony space, a fleet is required by law to identify itself by keeping its transponder turned on. This is a view shared by most, though not all, major factions. Okay. Turning on the transponder makes your fleet highly visible and everyone seeing it will know who you are, unlike that pirate fleet you fought earlier, which you had to be very close to positively identify. That makes sense. Okay. Activate the transponder before getting closer to Ankira, both to avoid unwanted attention from patrols and to receive docking clearance. Since turning it on and off has major consequences, it requires a double tap to turn on or off, once to prime and once more to confirm. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Oh, that's the same burn. Where's the transponder? Okay, we approach. Your fleet transmits identification code via the transponder. You're soon granted docking clearance. <clears throat> Take the shuttle down to visit the dock sidebar. Nice. <clears throat> Let's go to a bar. What the hell? Fleet approaches, transmits identity. Oh, yeah. Uh, you take the shuttle down to the main concourse and quickly find a likely looking establishment. Enter a crowded, well lit space and take in the rows of taps adorning the wall under bottles from every one of, those, every one of the core worlds and a few from elsewhere. Merchant captains mingle with off-duty officers at the bar, served efficiently by the uniformed staff. Wow, fancy. One corner, a pack of Navy cadets shout and sing, desperately enjoying their last work shift of freedom. Okay, well there's the bar. Okay, so now that I'm hammered, we'll open comm directory. Okay, you can connect to the local comm directory and browse public and otherwise known listings, transmit comms ID, and wait for the system to establish connection. Connection request is accepted surprisingly quickly given that a citizen has many responsibilities. Uh, you've come excellent. As you're aware recently, well, I suppose we can skip that part. Um, no, let's give me a refresher on recent events because I don't know what's going on. We've been running experiments on the dormant gate in this system, trying to connect it back to the domain's gate network, promising experience or so we, experiments, or so we thought, until an energy pulse we expected would get a response from the gate, destabilize the jump points leading into the system, cutting us off from the rest of the sector. Ooh. It's rather like how the sector is cut off from the domain. Red small, the stars have a sense of irony, do they not? Yes. Miners of the station, which is also located in this system and was operating near subsistence level, were hit the hardest. They turned to piracy. Ah, that's that thing I saw there. 
intercepting one of the last food shipments to come in out of desperation, no doubt. But there were deaths and they put themselves well outside the law. Their leaders know that if the jump points are stabilized and the system is once again part of the sector, they can look forward to a life sentence at a penal colony at best. Oh, okay, where do I fit in? Miners turned pirate are guarding the jump points, preventing us from gathering recent readings and coming up with a way to stabilize them. We do have a security detachment that could handle their forces, but they're tied up defending Akira. Pirates are too much for you to take on, but fortunately you don't have to. We've got an agent on the station who was able to gain access to recent sensor readings from the ships guarding the jump points, but they have not been able to get to a long-range comrade to send us the data. That's where you come in, head there and retrieve it from our agent, then return here. Why me, or what's in it for me? Uh, I don't like to come off as greedy in games like this. It usually ends up biting you in the ass. <clears throat> Why not? I'm exactly this, uh, exactly spoiled for the choice, and you've shown some ability to handle difficulties. Okay. It's not going to be a milk run, that's for sure. Relationship with Hegemony and Ares Centauron have improved. Cool. What's the plan? First off, make sure you turn off your transponder once you undock. I've instructed the security detachment not to give you any trouble about that. Okay. If you're lucky, the pirates may even think you're one of their own and let you approach without any trouble. Still, it makes sense to go dark as you get closer to make sure they can't get a good reading on your fleet. Gained ability to go dark. Nice. If they do notice me, then you're in trouble. Oh, okay. Activate emergency burn to get out of there, lose them, and come back around and try again. Don't eat burn unless you really need to. It's hard on the ship, so it will cost you more supplies to recover from. Eats up a good chunk of fuel. Thank you for being willing to help. Come back when you've got the data. Good luck. Okay. <clears throat> well. <laughs> Left click to pick up a stack. Shift click to pick up items from a stack one at a time. Shift click and hold then drag to pick up a specific quantity. Okay. Control click to transfer an entire stack without picking it up. Hold down alt to move the mouse transfer multiple stacks quickly. Okay, I will need them to show it again. Open market, yeah, I'm pretty open. One thing that's super easy to miss, try pressing F while you're in the shop. Ah, oh, okay. <clears throat> so you can sell your ships. Repairs, okay. Gotcha. Fleet. You mount both the weapons in your cargo hold and the ones available for purchase on the station. Undoing the changes to the ship's loadout, simply unmounting the purchase weapons will refund the credits used, but only if you haven't navigated away from the refit screen. Okay. Very important later on. Good to know. I have um, I have that weapon. You don't have any ships to fit that on. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, I 
actually, let's see. And do I need this for anything? Because, I mean, obviously, uh, the machinery and stuff is, is common design can be slave to the network control. Okay. I'm not sure what that... Fuel. Sure to re-enable the owned filter later. It won't show your inventory weapons. Ah, okay. I can use all the assistance I can get. <laughs> Think it's off now? Oh, don't! Damn it, wrong button. It re enables? Okay, good. Good, good, good. is here. Oh cool. This 25% has radiant ice. Mount type medium. Okay. I see. Gotcha. That looks brutal. Um so I'm wondering if I shouldn't sell off I like the I like the idea of having that, but I don't have a ship that'll go on yet. Recommend picking up a bit more crew. Yeah, good point. I don't want four hundred and fifty of them. Sixteen crew. No tariffs. I like no tariffs. Plus, I lost one in that fight. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't just sell this. Because it was saying that I could leave that behind. Um, before. Not put much point. Okay. Cool. Money! Ah, okay, which I can't afford. Never mind. Alright. <clears throat> Good call. There you go. Okay, so it's got me jumping over here. So I will set a thing. Consider your military options. Engage the orbital station? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> ah, let's not do that. Okay, so I need to go dark. Turn that off. Okay.
goes into orbit around the mining station. Local Port Authority seems to take no issue with your explanation for why your transporter regrettably can't be turned on. <laughs> Not dark. Frame around the icon indicates it's on. Oh, oh, uh-oh. Yikes. Well, apparently I made it okay. <laughs> Yee. All right. Nelson Norman. Your parents must have hated you. Uh, let's see. Okay, contact to the local comm directory and browse the public. All right, uh, contact the agent, exchange passphrases to verify each other's identities. Agent then transmits a data file with recent raw sensor readings of the unstable jump points. Okay. Let's uh, GTFO. Uh oh. Or. Pirate fleet maneuvers to prevent you from disengaging. I've seen that ship before, and I got my ass handed to me by it by in a larger ship. I should probably hit time to flee fast. Yeah, that's what I thought. That I I kind of guessed that, and I'm glad you said because yeah, attempt to disengage. Enemy fleet pursues your forces. Uh oh. Uh oh. Crash mothball some of your ships. No. Uh, uh oh. Okay, so let me see what's up here. Is it behind us? It's probably behind us. There's a target. Tab for the map. Ah, ah, yes, 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 yes. I wonder, can we run for that? Because then maybe if I capture this, they'll go after it to capture it back for themselves. Flying in the wrong direction. Yeah, I just, I turned around. I'm still, I'm still going backwards. I do want to flee. Probably gonna chase, and you're plenty fast. Okay, okay. So we'll just run. Uh oh. Try and run. Ow. Oh boy, another ship. Ow, drop it. Uh oh. And you know what I didn't do before I jumped in here? Was save it. <laughs> Damn it. Oh man. <laughs> there we go. We're going backwards. Press enter to retreat. Yes, retreating, retreating, retreating. <laughs> just going out backwards. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> Whatever direction I'll go, just go. <laughs> uh, okay. Preliminary reports. Two crew and no marines were lost. Okay, well, that's all right. They were expendable. They were the ones wearing the red shirts. Uh, enemy forces are able to recover some combat readiness as they control battle space and engagement was limited. Okay. Okay, let's go to the map and let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> Oh, okay. 
It's not like this one where you have to double click it. That's what I made the mistake of before. Okay, I'm getting closer to that planet. So let's turn that on so they know I'm coming back. Okay, docking clearance. Uh, let's go ahead and repair. Undergoes full repairs and restored to maximum combat readiness. The cost is six supplies. Okay. Uh, open comm directly. Let's talk to this dude. Hey, five grand. Nice. <clears throat> uh, have the data well done. There's a brief wait as you transmit the data file. Now, while the system is running, a preliminary analysis of the data, I believe you are due a reward. I am. Monday, Monday. There's a chime in the background, and he looks concerned. Oh, um, no. Thank you. <laughs> Just got out of there by the skin of my ass, but okay. I made it. Mm. Let's see, where is it and why hasn't it been salvaged before? Oh, I should probably read what he's talking about. System estimates it take about a cycle to analyze the data and come up with a stabilization algorithm. Naturally, by then, the data would be out of date and any algorithm based on it meaningless. If we had an AI core on hand, we could analyze the data more quickly. Fortunately, there's a survey probe somewhere in the system, one left over from the initial exploration of the sector by the domain should have at least one AI core serving as its brain. Where is it and why hasn't it been salvaged? To answer your second question, domain artifacts are usually protected by automated defenses, yay, that still function to this day. And this is, this probe is no exception. And the hegemony generally forbids civilian interference with domain artifacts for the sake of public safety, of course. Desperate times, however. Uh-huh. All right. As to where it is, my data indicates somewhere beyond the orbit of Pontus. Get there, then head out beyond the asteroid belt. You can use an active sensor burst. And let's see, and use an active sensor burst. You should, at the very least, get a sensor contact in the probe. Head towards it, perform salvage, bring it back. Uh, it is a gas giant in the outer system. To see its name on the map, you might have to turn off the inhabited option on the map filter. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to replace those three crew. Um, can I grab? Okay, I want more fuel. This is a lot to know. Information, mothball, suspended repairs, refit. Don't want to sell it. Okay, so both of those are 100% hull, 70% combat readiness. Ah, okay, gotcha. Officers, makes sense. Makes sense. I'm low on supplies. Yeah, that's a good um, good point. Oops. Crew and cargo. Supplies. Ah, okay. I cannot afford all of them. Let's 
still can't afford that many. Uh, what was it? Let's see if I can buy 30 of them. Oh, okay, number, a minimum number of 30. So I have twice as much crew as I need minimum, which I suppose is okay. Uh, I've got 60 units of fuel. kitten. That's the um, curse of having four of them. Alright. Fire's going. Let's see. Map. Uh, this is the... Oh, that's the fringe jump point. Uh, let's see. Sector. What do I need to do here? Let's see all these jump points. Show on map. Okay. Fully surveyed. That is. Set the. Hmm. Oh, okay, so that's only inhabited. Got it. Okay. Five to six. <laughs> I hope it's not going to just fly right through the star. It is. Oh, that's a little close there, guys. <clears throat> there was something you could hold something down to speed up time. I don't remember what that was. I'm pretty close to it anyway. It's worth steering around those Coronas, lower combat readiness, and you need supplies to recover it. Gotcha. I will definitely attempt to remember that. Uh, oh, I can establish a con and a oh, stamp. The words establish a colony or leave. Hmm. I thought this was supposed to be. What did I need to do here? Let's leave for right now. Oh, that is sick, and they're all spinning around it, and this is all spinning around it. That's sweet. Uh, I need to find, oh yeah, I need to do some kind of um, thing. I need to do a thing. Uh, sustained burn, emergency burn, sensor burst, that's the one. Turn off engines to reduce interference and link all sensors in the fleet to a single network. Okay. Head out towards the asteroid belt. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So I want to head towards the asteroid belt. Oh, 
Okay, I will be right back. My phone is ringing. All right, my apologies. All right, let's see here. Shift for speed up, gotcha, excellent. Um, think, 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 think. What am I supposed to do here? What the hell is that? Oh, it's just, uh, said head, head toward the asteroid belt and use that. But it looked like Ah, why did I do that? Oh, asteroid impact on drive bubble. Uh oh, what did I do? Kind of cute that you're still using a landline. You and my granddad, me and my gra and your granddad are the only two people you know. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he's like 85. Oh, good. Thank you. Appreciate that. Or was it this asteroid belt that I was supposed to be looking at? Probably. There's a signal over here. Might be a regional thing. <laughs> save yeah that was probably let's let's do that good call you know I always forget to do that it's it's never good and it always bites me in the ass uh, there is uh, it's useful during outages yes it is I agree um, and also where we live we can't always get a cell phone signal uh, because as I have mentioned we live in the middle of nowhere um, like, uh, for instance, my wife has a smartphone and the only way that she can make a call in this house is if she is in the kitchen. If she's in the kitchen, phone works fine. As soon as she leaves the kitchen, the signal dies. It might also have something to do with the fact that we live in a, uh, more than 100 year old adobe house that the walls on it are like two and a half feet and i mean this they're like two and a half feet thick they're each wall in this house i could stand inside if there was room sunday this guy's going my cell signal used to be so bad you can only call using the wi-fi yeah or as a family-wide thing yeah agreed indeed does anyone actually use it um, yeah, I think. And most everybody up here has a landline uh, because they have to. Um, it's, uh, it, it, and there are, there's only one cell service that actually gets reception up here. Um, we have to go through Verizon. There are a couple other that, uh, a couple other companies that will service this area, but doing so is kind of pointless. Fighting a headache, but otherwise doing okay. Playing some Minecraft on Rune Server. Oh, nice. I'm doing pretty good. Um, Terminals hooked me up with uh, an early copy of Star Sector. 
and I am checking it out uh, with uh, the great help of Expand here, uh, who uh, came in and first thing said, ooh, someone new to the game, this should be good. I'm <laughs> like, oh crap. <laughs> but uh, has been giving me an awful lot of help, so it's, uh, it's good. Uh, I'm glad you came along um, for this. So, yeah, very helpful, very helpful indeed. So let's see, your fleet approaches a domain era probe left from the initial domain exploration of the sector, pitted by small impacts, pros hold displays, iridescence typical of fearsome radiation scarring. Ooh. This probe's manufacture could, could well date to a thousand cycles ago. Some systems are still nominally active. Excellent. It's just fun to, fun to see new people find it. Nice. Been pretty passionate about the game. It I can see why. Uh, it has... Um, it has a lot of very familiar elements, but it's like a new take on those familiar elements. So I'm, I'm digging it so far. I'm digging it so far. It's a lot to take in, um, but uh, but yeah, it it reminds me. Like you know, the the developer even mentioned uh, on the website that it's an awful lot. Uh, you know, it's taken a bit of uh, Masters of Orion. Uh, two, I think, or three, um, and, uh, and and other elements of games similar to this and kind of throwing them together. And I definitely feel the Masters of Orion um, and Space Rangers vibe with it, and I'm, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Let's explore this thing. As your fleet moves in closer, several energy signatures are detected coming online inside the probe's hold. Oh, no. That means it's gonna shoot at me. Don't shoot at me. Engage the automated defenses. All right. So we're only gonna deploy this because that is a relatively defenseless ship. Let's see, have you ever played Mount and Blade Warband? I've heard of it. Probably one of the most similar games out there, even though it's 3D in an entirely different time. <laughs> Older game, but one you'd recommend. The name sounds really familiar. Like I might have played it at some point in time. It does sound familiar. Um, if you've never uh, played um, Space Rangers 2, uh, they have uh, an HD version. Of it uh, that is really uh, quite slick. At, um, it's 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 neat. It also has a real time strategy uh, like 3D isometric, uh, as well as just the there's like the top down space sparing part of it, uh, and then you can uh, with the the big enemy in the game, uh, you can and you can choose to turn these missions off too, which is neat if you're not into that sort of thing. Um, but it turn, goes from a turn-based <laughs> turn thing uh, to a, um, well, it's real-time with the ability to hit spacebar and pause and give, like this, uh, to give orders to, thing, you know, to, your, to your ship so that it can do stuffs. It's hard to explain. It's been a while since I played it, but I played through it like, I don't know at least a half dozen times really good uh it's it's one of those games that i will put down for like three four six months and then get the itch to play it again so i'll start playing it and play it like religiously for a couple of months and then put it down and then come back to it but uh it's an awful lot like um awful lot like this in form but not really in function it's uh, more of a, a combat-oriented uh, thing. It's really good if you haven't uh, haven't seen it. It's 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 pretty good, and it's on Steam, and it's probably cheap. Uh, okay, so we're gonna deploy this ship, and waypoint. No, nope, I don't want that. Incoming vessels, one. Okay. Good. Uh-oh. That's more than one.
Whoops, wrong direction. Ramming speed. Ow. Yeah, I'm getting I'm I'm still having trouble getting used to the movement. Because it's weird, you use shift and A and D to strafe. dangerous but the pacing is just so slow yeah yep it is that it is to do apart from the sandbox stuff. I'll go back and read all of that once I get uh, once I get out of this situation I'm in here. I'm going to have to check it out later. Sounds a bit like Divinity Dragon Commander from that description. Okay. That one I haven't heard of. Divinity. More interesting to watch than X4 or ED. Yeah. Agreed. The pace is much faster. Yup. Yeah. This game is a lot more action focused than a lot. That's good. That's good. Uh, even if it's just dialogue, at least something happens every now and then. Yup. It does thin out a bit after the tutorial. Story stuff isn't in yet. Okay. Uh, there are some small things to do apart from the sandbox. Some mods have added power ending conditions and stuff. Not updated to 0.9 yet. Yeah, and see, that's one thing. Uh, I would probably hold off on mods until there's more space between updates. Because, you know, as we all know... Um, modding and frequent updates kind of <laughs> smack into each other at high speed and with much anger. <laughs> <clears throat> 9 took a year and a half to come out. Oh my god. Wow. Pretty safe to start a modded run if even if uh, if you read the threads and check for bugs. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll have to take a look. I think I need to get a hang of what's here first. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll have to look through uh, to see what's uh, what's available through there. Core is a good place to start. I yeah, 
always, always, always play a game vanilla before you start trying to mod it. I am a firm believer in that. Yep. <clears throat> okay, your forces were able to gain a complete victory in the last engagement. Pick through the wreckage. Taking on more salvage than your fleet has capacity to carry, this will result in greatly increased daily supply consumption and reduced travel speed. Recommend you either take less salvage, head for a nearby station to sell off the access. Okay. Uh, okay. Ooh, what's this? Light mortars. Small ballistics. Those I can actually mount somewhere. Antiquated weapon that fires anti-armor rounds at a low rate. Muzzle velocity and range. Low flux buildup is a lone saving grace. Okay, but they'll sell. So that that is something. Okay. I know it'll take uh, an awful lot of supplies to do this, but money. I do like money. Green for 3,000 experience. Woohoo! As your fleet finishes mopping up the automated defenses, a weak hyperwave ping is detected coming from the probe. Oh no. It's unclear if this is random noise from a dying subsystem or some kind of encrypted signal. Your fleet finishes its approach to the domain era probe without further incident. Okay, well that's good. <clears throat> uh oh. Oh no. Receive a preliminary assessment of potential salvage operation from the exploration crews. Resource recovery effectiveness, 65%. Okay. Recovery effectiveness does not affect the chance of finding rare and valuable items. All right. Gotcha. Let's begin salvage operations. Yikes. That's a lot of stuff. Okay. So I need the core. That's got to go. And if I can carry the stuff, I'm going to take the stuff because, like I said, pack rat. And if I can sell it, I can sell it. But I cannot take all of that. drag to select more stuff okay yeah 15 supplies per day yeah because i was carrying way more than my uh um capacity yep that'd be expensive and not worth it because these are more expensive than this pays me <clears throat> so maybe what i'll do is just leave that behind altogether. Not sure if the fuel is worth it. Supplies are very expensive. Yeah, good point. Oh, I see. I see. Gotcha. Dun, dun, dun. And I'll burn a bit of that fuel on the way back. I don't think that's worth it because, like you say, supplies are expensive. Still using four per day. Please over fuel capacity using an extra point one point six supplies. Yes, I know. Okay. So tab to go to the map. I need to go back here. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, da, 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 da. and it's crazy because that stuff is actually orbiting. Like the the planets and stuff are moving around that uh, around the star, which that's not something that it actually that is something that happens in uh, Space Rangers as well. Um, and I would recommend either of the Space Rangers 
2 has much more depth to it um, and is I found it more enjoyable than the first though the first is really uh, quite a bit of fun let's burn some of that fuel like a lot since I've got the fuel to burn Is completed. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, transmits identification codes. Open the com directory. Let's talk to this dude again. Eight grand. Woohoo! I'll get my technicians working on this right away. In the meantime, you should cover your expenses. This should cover your expenses, hopefully, with a good amount left over. Yes. Oh, and I'm favorable with this guy now. Nice. Lost one gamma core. I'll send you the stabilization algorithm when the core works up. Once you have it, you should be able to, should be a simple matter of running it using your fleet's drive field as a means of interacting with the jump point. However, there's still the matter of the miners guarding both jump points out of the system. You said their forces are significant. Well, it's all relative. Our security detachment could handle them easily, but as I've mentioned, it's tied down defending the planet. Your fleet, on the other hand, you might be able to handle them with some stellar piloting and a bit of luck, but it's best not to take such chances, especially when not when there's an alternative. Oh, there's an alternative. All right. There's a ship graveyard around Tetra. Ships that were deemed not worth the effort to restore, awaiting bulk transit to one of the ship breaking facilities elsewhere. Now, though, they'll serve your needs. Go there and recover all the ships you can and break the ones you can't for supplies. Make sure to bring enough crew to operate the recovered ships. Perhaps an extra hundred or so will do. Okay. You'll need to transport them somehow. Take this mud skipper transport. Consider it part of your reward. Oh, cool. I got a uh, new ship. Thank you. I'll return with the ships. Let's repair. Ah, wait. Thought I could be. Smart and pick up a hundred and then pick up one more. Okay, so that's the extra hundred plus the crew that I need. Uh, let's confirm that and then see what else I've got here. I'm thinking about selling, just selling these off. And I'm pretty sure I can't use, I know I can't use these. <clears throat> but that would be they're not that expensive but it would be less stuff that I'm carrying yeah that one, we'll sell them off okay character I have another point hmm I think I want to go after that. I think I'm going to go ahead and put um, point into tech so that I can eventually pick that up. combat <laughs> okay this is the little ship that I just picked up Fuel is only used in hyperspace and with the e-burn. Tutorial covers that later. Ah, okay. 
Gotcha, 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 gotcha. 15 supplies per day. Yeah, that's <clears throat> pretty, uh, that was pretty steep. Okay. So, now we gotta find those ships. Cover at least two, two ships at Tetra. Ships. Okay, let's save this before I jump into that. Buffalo Mark II. Hey, I used to live near there. Uh, destroyer drifting through space. It's battered, though determining whether it's recoverable or not will require a closer examination. Let's do it. Nice. Definitely take the supplies. I've got tons of fuel, and we'll recoup a little bit of that in this process. Control click sends items straight to the inventory, speeds things up. Ah, okay. Especially with larger pools. Okay. Control click. Control click. I think I can remember that. Uh, let's examine the pods. Oh, 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 I see. It's what's left over after. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, leave those there. Tarsus class freighter. D class. Those I remember were suboptimal. I think that's how they put that. <clears throat> Let's explore it. Cool. Definitely take supplies. Kite class, wolf class. Let's go after this one. Oh, there's more out here. Ooh. Salvage crews boarding the wreck discover it. Maybe the essential systems are undamaged and the ship could be restored to functionality. If not recovered, the ship will be scuttled and fitted weapons will be re retrieved. Okay, yeah. Definitely recover it. Ouch. Says Phagius is now part of your fleet. Yay! Okay. Some of the ships are dangerously low combat readiness. Deploying these ships in combat is likely to cause critical malfunctions, dealing damage, disabling some weapons and engines for the duration of the battle, and causing further critical malfunctions during the deployment. Ugh. Let these ships recover before using them in combat. Ships regain combat readiness over time. Friendly stations offer a quick way to do so and effect repairs, as well as hire an additional crew. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Good, good. We're fine. Uh, let's see. I'm going to pause it, because I want to see what these are. Hammerhead class destroyer. <clears throat> or a condor class carrier. Ooh. Uh, I like a destroyer. Oh, man. Okay, I think I'm going to go for this one. Let 
and see if I can use it. Consider ship recovery. Yeah, because this is one of the ships that I used in the tutorial, and that thing seemed pretty badass. Oof. Okay, let's do it. The Harpy. And I want to see if I can, if I've got enough stuff to do this. Consider ship recovery. Damn it. Will it let me? Yes. Because I'll go back and fix them, I don't care. Fleet does not have enough personnel to fully crew. Okay, you can concentrate available crew on specific ships by mothballing some from the fleet screen. It's recommended that you hire more crew in a nearby space station as soon as possible. Okay. Okay, as long as I can get them back to the uh, to that planet, I'm okay. And it looks like I can. Make a waypoint and come back later. Don't remember there being any harm to taking on the max amount of fuel cargo you can carry. Might be good to just grab it all. Oh, okay. Okay. Do Rex disappear? That I don't know. Runs out of supplies. All repairs will stop and ships will start to lose combat readiness. After more than a couple of days without supplies, the fleet runs the risk of accidents. Losses of cargo. Losing a ship. Ugh. Fire more supplies as quickly as possible. Yes. Scuttle one of your own ships to get supplies. Okay. Cool. I think they do after a while. Okay. <clears throat> That's good to know. But I'm almost here, so we should be okay. Debris definitely does. Okay. Good to know. Okay, so that doesn't go as part of the capacity of... Okay. God, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Mm. Ooh. Okay, so that's going to require that... Because I need 440 crew okay I'm using seven points seven point eight supplies per day 440 is your max you need 190 with current ships ah okay gotcha all right all right so take on slightly more than I need just in case some of them die <laughs> which is very likely uh... forty one ordinance points left fifty one ordinance points seventy six what the hell Smeegee! Yes, butt stuff. Note How's to self to never watch Market Stream again, but... <laughs> <laughs> How are you? What you up to today? Sounds like you had a good time at your concert yesterday. I am good. Trying out a new game. Uh, let's see. I need to figure out how to... How do I repair? 81 supplies, 31 are available. Okay. Ah, no, I don't want to leave. That's not what I meant to do. Um, 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 um.
Oh, I can't do that. Okay. <clears throat> Concert in Indiana last night. Just got home a little while ago. That's cool. I'm gonna fix these. But if I sell this one, the one that they gave me. probably sell some fuel yeah that's what I was thinking too that's what I was thinking too uh... So it is finishing repairs. Degraded engines. Super tiny middle of nowhere town. Amish country had to yield to a buggy for the first time ever in my life. Nice. <laughs> Essential oil type beads are supposed to help with my science problem. Here's to helping. Yeah, hopefully that does work. You can always try smelling salts. That'll clear your ass out real quick. <laughs> Yum. Okay. So that's finishing repairs. We'll take one day. We'll take f almost four days. That's gonna take seven days, yikes. I'm not sure what the ordinance points are. Does that mean that it has um, like weapon, weapon bays open? Yes, it does. should have kept those weapons to put on here this um, I think I'm gonna sell this ship Needed, they gave me that so that I could transfer crew to pick up those other guys. Uh, and of course, they're going to charge me more than I bought it, or more than I sold it to them for. <clears throat> jerks <laughs> I shouldn't have sold that stuff I didn't think about that of course I didn't know I was going to be getting 
um, derelict ships to pick up. Ordnance points are how much... Um... <laughs> Sinus problems suck. I hope that helps you. Just saying that they suck? Yeah, it probably does. Love this part. So much customization you can do. Yeah, no kidding. An alkaloid addiction. Yikes. Points you spend on weapon modifications and flux tweaks. Oop, cost of ordinance is a little more than I have. Okay. Spend hours designing your fleet. Yeah, I'm sure that can get uh I'm sure that can get very time consuming. That's pretty awesome. And you can run a simulation. It seems like uh will give you an idea of how much damage it's gonna do and take and <laughs> old age. Oh, Smishy, you're so cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're so old. God, I can't imagine being that old. Mostly because when I was your age, it was like eons ago, so I can't remember. <laughs> you turned so old on Monday, uh-huh. You got a blast. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Boom. Oh, and see, they have it has a medium, medium ballistic hard point that I could have uh, could have used. Dang it! I shouldn't have sold that stuff. That was well. I needed the money. Oh well. And how much old is that? Yeah, how how how, how much old are you uh, are you taking on there, Smishy? Okay. Twenty six olds. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> let me wait let me like play in this this tiny little fiddle <laughs> going on 56 yeah oh uh, let's see okay light support carrier balance destroyer um damn it i don't know what to do with this here because this barely has anything on it spirit animal is a little old lady okay <laughs> <coughs> that was good. <clears throat> okay, maximum combat readiness and 68 supplies. Alright, so I need more supplies because I've now got none supplies. This uh, light machine gun I can put on something. Oh, how much is that thing? Oh, crap. Way too much. <laughs> Way too much. A lot more money than I have. Damn it. Medium ballistic. That's only 960. Well, I will... Oops. I will buy one of those so that I can put it on that other thing. Um, and... I'll leave those there. I need to make the monies. Yep. You want to use them, let's see, if you don't have weapons, dumping on a ton of caps, vents, and hull mods tends to work. Though you'll want to use them as spare, use them sparingly in combat, they'll just suck up supplies. Okay. Okay. Cool. Man, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I would be lost. <laughs> so lost. Okay, uh, let's buy up as much of those as I can. I'm only using one per day, so I can last for 19 days before I've got, a, got some problems. And actually, how about... 
We'll sell down that fuel a little bit and then see how much in supplies I can buy. Use all the monies. Nope. I thought it said 99 bucks per unit. But that's 397. Why is it four? Oh, oh, because I didn't confirm that. Okay, because I'm an idiot. Derp. All right. Oh my God. <clears throat> kind of cute seeing min-max supplies in the dozens when your current fleet carries about 4,000 maxed out. Good God, man. <laughs> That's insane. When I, uh, let me just point out, when I say good God, man, I mean that in a non-gender specific because you don't, you don't assume anybody's gender on the internet. It's not what I was doing. <laughs> it's a death ball yeah right my god that's got to be insane of course if you have the money to support it let's just say all co your colonies are a bit broken at the moment because <laughs> you got to go around and buy up everything that they manufacture that's insane wow 30 capital ships for fun the other day. Oh my god. Wow. Holy smokes. That's crazy. Okay, so I need... I don't have any money left to go to the bar. Alright. Wait. I'm supposed to go here? I am here. Uh, open the comm directory. Ah, because I'm supposed to talk to him yet. That's why. All right. Local comm. I also have to put those weapons, because I have weapons in storage that I need to put on uh, some of those rust buckets. Welcome back. Bunch of rust buckets. Put some weapons on them. Get a proper refit. And with a dedicated crew, they'll do all right. It's no worse than what the pirates have at any, at any rate. All right. Speaking of weapons, yeah, I was just about to talk to you about that. Not much to buy on the open market, but we have some stores. Already ordered local storage space to be assigned to you. And some suitable weapons transferred there. Excellent. Along with enough supplies to speedily bring... Damn it, I wasted all my money. <laughs> bring the new ships back to... I should have talked to them before I repaired them. That's okay. Let's see, uh, 30 capital ships were found, sounds like the stuff the Borg would do. Resistance is futile, especially when you have 30 siege beams aimed at you. <laughs> nice. Alright, I'm just gonna call you Borg from now on. That'll, that, that's your new name. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Let's see, I've already ordered local storage. Alright, uh, should be enough to bring them back to combat readiness. Use them to outfit your new ships. Make sure you've got enough crew for a full complement on every ship. Then break the rogue minor defenses at the inner jump point. Okay, once this conversation is over, press R to open the refit screen. After selecting a specific ship, you can hit V to auto fit. Pick a uh, desired loadout and the ship will be automatically refit to match it using what weapons are available. Oh, okay. In addition, you now have access to local storage at Ankyra, and some weapons and supplies have been placed there to access it. Click on the storage button. All right, I'm thinking you get the stabilization, stabilization algorithm. Correct, these cores seem like they can work miracles sometimes. Let me transmit the results. Good luck to you. If you fail, well, we'll have to send the security force to do the job, and then it could get very messy. It's good to know you're already working on a plan B. <laughs> Thanks for having a lot of faith in me, dude. It's not so grim. I have every expectation you'll succeed, or I wouldn't send you. Mm -hmm. But it's my responsibility as commander to plan for every eventuality and not rely on a miraculous savior. All right, that's, yeah, that's fair. <clears throat> 13 or 37, here. You are 13 of 37? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Now about those miners. Two fleets guarding the jump point 
will aid each other if you engage one when the other is nearby. So it might be easier fight if you manage to separate them first. If you can't, it should still be a fight you can win. Copy that. I'll be back here when the job's done. <laughs> All right, so we will go <clears throat> to refit. No, fleet. No, crew, cargo, this. Whoa, that's a lot of stuffs. Holy smokes. Okay. Broadsword LPC, production chip that allows a carrier's nano forges to produce fighters, replacement parts, and related ordnance. Oh, cool. Very cool. <clears throat> hey, he gives you stuff. Forgot about that. That's okay. I, um, yeah, I didn't think, uh, well, and see, and I was, I, I, I jumped ahead of myself by going to repair and try and outfit without talking to him first. And I should have known that there was going to be something leading into that. So <clears throat> that's okay. <clears throat> Let's see. I want... I'm going to put this stuff in storage so it will pull from that. Fleet. Refits. Okay. So, I want to refit the destroyer first. It had a vaguely remember having a ship in. Okay, let's see. Doesn't look like it. Might have changed that. <clears throat> It'd be under the fleet menu. Ah. <clears throat> Don't. Ah. Found a random shuttle in your storage a few days ago. Wonder what gave you that shuttle. That is strange. Interesting. I have 17 bucks left. I probably can't even afford a drink in the bar. But I'm going to refit this one first because I want this one to have... Um, let's go with a balanced... Dope, cost of ordinance, 360. So I'm gonna have to sell some stuff in order to do this. Uh, okay, well, crap. Buy ordinance from market, it'll fill in the blanks, okay. I think I should probably just dump a little bit more fuel. Buy weapons and fighter LPCs if docked. Or an instrument. There we go. Okay. We'll do that. This is a Carrier, isn't it? Yeah, so let's go with the support. <clears throat> Broadsword, heavy fighter, piranha bombers. Oh, cool. There's different kinds. Mining pot auxiliary. Oh, okay. Very cool. what these mean what this means here 
with these uh, red lines. Oh, oh, I see. I see. That is the number of features. Those are the D mods. Gotcha. And I don't have... I've got all this stuff here. Definitely want to take the supplies with me. Um, and I'm wondering if I shouldn't... <laughs> I know it's risky after I just did um, what I did, but sell off some of these things to... Um, get ordnance because without it I don't I think I'm gonna be I, I need ammo for those uh, for these things still a few unchecked ships down below might be good to check those first hmm. oh oh I got gotcha. you yeah I know what you're talking about I know what you're talking about okay Yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and take. Hopefully, I can get uh, I can do this without uh, without getting slapped sideways here. Tab the map. Asteroid impact on drive bubble. I need to watch for that. Okay, Lasher class frigate drifting through space, battered. Begin salvage operations. Since I have the ability to take it, I'm going to take everything because the more I can sell off, the better. Oh, can't avoid those. They just throw you around a bit. Gotcha. Okay. Whew. I'll go back and grab that. Uh... Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, derelict kite class shuttle drifting through space. Signs of damage, determining whether it's recoverable. Okay. Salvage crews boarding the wreck. Essential systems. I could, just, I could recover it. Yep. Yeah. I can always sell it if I don't want it. That is. Amethion. Amethon. Amethon. Is that like the? Is that him? Never mind. Stop it. <laughs> Ooh, tanker. Why not? Let's grab them all. <clears throat> all right, part of a fleet. Tab to go to map. I want to. Do I want to check this out? I mean, while I'm down here, how about we? Let's do this. Let's be smart and save it. And then let's go check out the debris field. Uh, stop doing that. Okay, some of your ships are at low combat readiness. All right, no problem. We'll be all right. They're fine. Uh, now what do I do with this? I don't remember what to do with this. Scavenge. That's it. Please assume stable orbit. It's likely something of value. All right. 
Let's do this thing. An accident occurred, resulted in the loss of five heavy machinery. Balls. Okay. I'll take it all. I've got enough space. We're all right. And I can sell this stuff, so that is good. Okay, confirm. Now let's go back. And you can do this multiple times, but there's diminishing returns on it. And since I already ran into an accident situation, I think I'm just going to go ahead and plot the course back here. Wait a minute. There was a thing on the map. What was that? Oh, this is where I've got to go to blow up the... Yeah, okay. Good, good. It's pretty wild, all of them jockeying for positions. It's flying around each other. Cost of one supply. Yay! Okay. So, that stuff is in storage. I'm going to drop that in there. Confirm that. I want to... There we go. That's the button I'm looking for. <laughs> Sell all this stuff. 781 bucks. Yeah, take it. And then... Oh, well, that's pretty cool. That's uh, a little expensive for me. But... Let's go ahead and get rid of... Some of the fuel. And then refit. Oh, I gotta confirm that first, then refit. And let's see what we've got here. Light tanker. I wanna see what that get the information of it first here. That's probably, <clears throat> this is probably what increases my, uh, yeah, enough fuel capacity and more than double the effective range of small task force. Okay. Tanker with compromised storage, that's rough. Yeah, no kidding. Bleh. And maybe strip that thing and sell it. <laughs> Ouch. Supply cost to recover from deployment reduced by 20%. And faulty power grid. Oh no, sh wow. Wow, that's crazy. That's cool. Because I don't want to put that thing in combat anyway.
sure to edit the weapon groups. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Weapon group one through five. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. strongly considering selling off this tanker but I'm not sure if it would be a good idea to do it or not Can you fix these? Is this something that you can... That you can get rid of? Can you repair that restore button? Okay. Ah. Oh! Gotcha. Yes. <laughs> then I read that. Yeah. No kidding. Woohoo! <laughs> that is a little pricey. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so let me see. How much money would I get for it if I sold it off? Eight hundred and eighty bucks. <laughs> that that might be that might be worth. That might be worth getting rid of. Because I'm I mean if I'm in system, I'm not having a real need for crazy amounts of fuel. And if it's, um, if it has a uh, compromised storage to begin with, that might be, that might be worth it. Let's see, when in doubt, hover over a cargo stat and F1. that what uh oh 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 i think what you're i think i this ah nice yeah this thing is only giving me 10 cargo capacity I think out. That's that's my impression. Am I right? Do I pass? Did I get it? Because it's only adding 10 uh, units of cargo capacity. Sell it. Maybe scuttle it. That's in the fleet options, right? Yeah, it's one of these. <clears throat> okay, so strip this ship of anything useful, gaining six supplies, six fuel, and one heavy machinery. Or I could sell it for 880. What would... Because those are 100. Those are 24. And machinery they don't have here. Those are 66 per unit. It seems like it might be more... It might be a better um, better option to sell it rather than scuttle it because one heavy machinery, <clears throat> six supplies, six fuel. Actually, it might pay out better to scuttle it and sell the stuff. I mean, you know, just like works out about the same, but machinery is pretty common. Oh, okay. 
Okay. That's good. We do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think I could probably use the cake more than I can use the stuff. <clears throat> and then do these things have Uh, the cost of ordinance that was something that I'm wondering if it needed yeah because ordinance if, if I'm not mistaken would be ammunition and does this require ammunition purchases is that how because wait a minute is that how that works Check out the preview to the right of that window. Market may not stock the stuff, so it may not be an improvement. Okay. to swap the right front turret oh okay who cost of ordinance six grand Ah, okay, now I see. Now I see what it's doing. But as long as it doesn't have any open weapon ports, then it should be fine, yeah? <coughs> Pardon me. Damn it, that fire's going out again. probably be fine okay I will trust you because you seem to know a lot more about this than I do um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave because I got about a half an hour left until I've got to stop streaming for today and I will save it before I go into combat <clears throat> let's go and, and beat some stuff up here <clears throat> separate them out here.
Come on, come after me. There you go. Come on. Come on. You can come over here. Ooh, now they're super close together. Crap. Looks like I might not be able to separate them now that they're so damn close together. Might have more luck with that. Oh yeah, good point. Come on, you can come out. Come on to play. Ah! Emergency burned. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Come here. They don't wanna. Come here. They're afraid of my fleet. This is awkward. <laughs> yeah. They really are. <laughs> They're taking off. It looks like I'm going to pound holes in them, though, because it's a relatively small group. And they are. They're, they are totally running from my ass. That's great. Come here. Always pick the bigger fleet options at the start just so you can tackle them both. You never tried this? That's excellent. don't wanna <laughs> <clears throat> yeah eburn if i can catch up okay there we go oh yeah they're going to get they're going to get pounded Okay. Uh, pursue them. We gotta blow them up. Uh, transfer command. Take command of the action. Let's take command of the action. Dun dun dun. Okay, we're gonna leave that one out of it. And actually, let's see. Will that? Hang on. Because I want to take. Uh... Damn it. I should have taken control of that one, but I can I can do that in in battle. It'll only take a moment.
coward. <clears throat> you target an enemy, your fighters and missiles will focus on it. Cool. And that's with R, right? That's what I've done here. Awesome. Boom! Sucka! Take this over here. Enemy fleet is defeated. Press escape to end the battle at any time. Okay. Claim victory. Leaving now... Let's see. Enemy is defeated. Leaving now will allow any remaining ships to retreat unhindered. Wait. Okay. Pirate fleet is attempting to disengage. Does not appear to be certain of your identity. Any hostilities will reduce. Okay. <clears throat> well, I do not care if the pirates don't like me because they're pirates. Screw them. 240 credits. Nice. Let's take everything. After these guys. No, <laughs> he's emergency burning to get away from me. Come here. Okay, well, if you don't, I was trying to give you a peaceful way out of it, but. Uh. Because overkill is the best kind of kill. running. I dropped the items. Uh-oh. Dope. Phase skimmer will help catch up with stuff. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's right. Ow. I like that bigger ship better. Shields down, zero flux speeds you up. Right, right, right. Oh, yes, and it's got the shields. <clears throat> I did not notice that right away. Thank you.
<laughs> one of them retreated. Prize of high orbit. <laughs> okay. Whoops. <laughs> that could have gone better. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> We're just going to go flying around the planet, around the planet, around the planet. Move in to engage. Transfer command to this one. Okay. Too close to that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to mess with this a lot to get used to it. I think the like those combat missions might not be a bad idea to get used to how to maneuver and stuff, because I, I feel like I'm kind of floundering a little bit. I feel like I'm floundering a lot. <laughs> this is pretty beat up. I was way too close to that ship when it exploded. They're together now, they're a bit more confident. Yeah, I'm nearly out of supplies. Oh crap. Doing too bad, just gotta know when to raise lower shields and which targets to go after. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, that's good. I'm I'm glad that I'm not like completely out in the <clears throat> out in the boonies here. Consider ship recovery. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, wow. Oh, but I'm way out of supplies. Okay, so... I should probably scuttle these three things. That's a lot of D-mods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so let's not recover any of them. Oh, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate that. I will, um, even though I got a cold cup of coffee here, I'd still do it. Hmm. <sighs> 
Yeah, I think I'm probably... Because if you don't recover them, it will automatically scuttle them for the stuff, right? For the materials and whatnot. Awesome. Okay. Because, yeah, I don't have the supplies to do that anyway. 1500 bucks. That's pretty good. Pick through the wreckage. Oh, wow. Okay. Can I take it all? I'm almost out of supplies. 53. Okay, we're good. I can take all this stuff. What did I get? Yeah, glad I got some supplies back. That that was close. Yup, yup, yup. Good deal. Assault chain gun. Swarm SRM launcher. Hammer class torpedo. Light machine gun. And Vulcan cannon. Okay, I'll take it. Dun, dun, dun. Two character points to spend. Stabilize the jump point. Okay. Field goes through a series of esoteric fluctuations. Their resonance gradually canceling out the instability. Might be worth grabbing the debris. Yeah, good call. Good call. Okay. Um, let's see. There we go. Scavenge. And no. No. That's a lot of... A lot of demods, as you say. In salvage operations. Lost one heavy machinery. Okay. Then I got five back, so that's all right. Cool. Take it all. Hell yeah. Okay. Plan it. Save it. Plan it. <laughs> Let's see. Tab, and then I got to go back and talk to this guy. Uh, now, steering around it, I can basically just set a course for here and then go around instead of going right through because it won't automatically distance you from the star enough, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. That's a lot of stuff. Okay, still gonna bust back there. Keep an eye on the bar above your abilities that shows active environment effects. Oh, okay. Good to know. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the comm directory and talk to this dude. Ten grand! Woohoo! Well done. Bit giddy with excitement. We actually did it. Yeah. We. <clears throat> you never know with these things. It's such a relief not to be cooped up in the system anymore. Here's your reward, well earned, and with my gratitude, in addition, I've set you up with a monthly stipend. Well then, should run for two full cycles. Booyah! And that's pretty much the end of the main story content. Mostly sandbox from now on. Well, that's cool. At least I was, you know, it, it took me, you know, roughly three, two and a half, three hours uh, to get through it. Um, so that's not terrible, you know, and it seems like it's probably going to be more stuff, I would imagine, <clears throat> and I do not have a problem with sandboxes. <coughs> Damn it. Now I expect the authorities at 
The headquarters on Jengala in the Corvus system would like to hear about recent events. Would you deliver a report? Has to speak to the station commander, Commander Europa, when you get there. Oh, and make sure to take enough fuel. Make the trip. Flying in system, as you have been, doesn't use fuel. So it's easy to forget that flying in hyperspace does. It's not too far, but with your current fleet, you'll need at least 50 units to get there. Good to know. Can't imagine that being done anytime. Next update was supposed to be storyline from what you remember. Can't imagine that being done anytime soon. Yeah, it seems like they're taking, uh, you know, quite a bit of time. And I don't suppose you know offhand how many people are actually, you know, hands-on in this. I can't imagine there's a lot. I can't imagine that there's a lot of people working on it and just because of how long you were saying it took for them to go from point eight to point nine. Gain the ability to stress call. If you manage to run out of fuel somehow and you get stuck, call up the fuel rats. No, wait, wrong game. Uh, and that'll be real feet on the Galactic Corvus route. Let me tell you, you can always issue a distress call and wait for help to arrive. All right. Alex, the main dev, and there's a few people for art and music. Very small team. Yeah, that makes sense. That seems like a, a pretty common thing, you know, when you don't have uh, a lot of people uh, moving on stuff. Um, it's hard to come up with the money to pay people to, you know, come together on. That's indie for you. <laughs> That's... Um, that's weird because there's another Alex uh, that is a, uh, a an indie dev on a small team working on another space game that I know of, uh, Between the Stars. Is it Between? No, 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 no. wait. Alex, no, he's, um, yeah, he's on Between the Stars. That's, that's the one. Right? Yes. I guess Alex's and Indies go together. <laughs> So, okay, well, what I'm going to do, uh, I'll consider my options and I'm going to leave here and save it once again. In fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and hard save it. This will, uh, oh, oh, okay, overwrite your last save with the current game. Gotcha. All right, and then copy. That's a good thing. All right, bounty faction. Oh, wow, okay, so there's a bunch of missions that come up on the map after you've done all that stuff, I would assume. Bounty for things, that's crazy. Damn. Pretty wild, that is pretty wild. I'm, I am pretty, uh, pretty excited about this. I, I, I think the, the, my overall experience has been um, <clears throat> it, that it's a lot of fun um, and it is uh, it seems to have quite a bit of depth to it uh, as far as like um, modifications to your fleet and stuff like that um, and uh, now that um, I'm getting toward full sandbox bo mode I'm pretty certain that that is only going to get bigger um, expand as you said you've expanded quite a bit haha -ha, I know sorry <clears throat> um, and and you've got you're buying 4,000 supplies that's insane um, so yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some uh, put some time into this and, and see uh, see just what happens um, I'm gonna going to uh, upload this to uh, to YouTube after the fact um, and uh, submit that to um, terminals uh, for coverage and uh, I will probably do another stream of this uh, in the near future because you know it usually takes you 34 30 to 40 hours per campaign run till you get to the point where you've done everything you want to good value for the money yeah i can uh i can see that what's the um what's the because i know you can buy it in alpha i was fortunate enough uh to get a uh, a copy through terminals uh though this looks like just the kind of game i would spend money on uh to support uh to support the devs for it because uh it's pretty wild um i had a good time with it and i can only see that opening up further
And if you're doing 30, 40 hour campaign runs, that is definitely good value for the money. Even if you only play through it once, um, I would uh, I would have to say that that's uh, time well spent. Hell, uh, Call of Cthulhu, uh, I spent 10, 10 to 11 hours uh, running through that campaign from beginning to end. Uh, I felt like it was a bit too short uh, for uh, for the price, uh, but uh, Terminals hooked me up with a copy of that too, so you know I can't complain. Um, but it's uh, it was a bit short uh, as far as like a a story driven game goes. I felt like ten hours was <clears throat> a little on the low side. So if you're spending thirty to forty uh, to do what everything that you want to do in here, that's that's good. I mean, 30, anywhere between 20 and 40 hours for a game for me is good. Anything on either side of that is either too grindy or too short. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, that's a good good middle of the road balance for it. That seems uh, seems good. I'm digging it a lot. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to dig into this a little bit where I can kind of putz around and embarrass myself a little and then, um, you know, come back a little bit more knowledge. So, um, you know, now that you followed, please keep an eye on it for when I'm going to be streaming this again, because I will probably need your help. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, that goes for everybody because, you know, I enjoy the company and it makes it so that I'm not just a crazy old man talking to myself. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Oh, my pleasure. I, I'm I, again. Thank you very much uh, for for showing up here. That's brilliant. I'm glad I could uh, um, have your um, support in it, and I'm glad you enjoyed. Uh, so for everybody, uh, I will. Um, I might be back. Uh, I might be back on tomorrow actually uh, to do an off schedule stream, uh, but I'm not certain yet because I've got some things real life to do. But I'll keep you posted. Um, it'll be uh, in Discord, Twitter, etc. If you don't need to know where to find that information, it's down below. Um, and uh, I will, uh, I will see you guys later. Thank you very much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. It has been a blast. And until later, get off my lawn. Booyah.